Underwood comes out of retirement and onto the wing. On the other wing, his brother Tony, who replaces the injured Ian Hunter. Rob Andrew, England's most cap fly half, was winning his 50th cap. Despite some strong challenges from the midweek side, the South African selectors fielded the same 15 which had won such a thrilling victory at Bristol last week. With Heinrich Rogers still injured, Johann Stecher comes in opposite Victor Obogu on the loose head. Frederick Smith, normally a lock, retains his place on the flank. And just reward for Theo van Rensburg's fine work on this tour. He's at fullback in place of Hugh Rhys Edwards, who played in the tests against France. Your commentators, Bill Beaumont and Bill McClarn. Nas Bota about to lead the South Africans onto the field and just listen to the welcome they'll receive. And so Nas Bota doing uh, what Scotland did, if you remember, in 1990 against England at Murrayfield. They're walking onto the pitch. You notice how tense and tight they are, but what a great moment for those players, young and old. Indeed, too, for Rob Andrew, who has been given the privilege and a lovely gesture of leading England out onto the field to mark his 50th international appearance. And already this big crowd of 54,000 giving a tremendous welcome to the England side as well. And, of course, it's a particularly big day for the Underwood brothers. There's Tony, the younger of the two. The Underwood brothers playing together as brothers in an England team and in an international for the first time since way back in 1938 when Arthur Wheatley and Harold Wheatley played here against Scotland. And I'm delighted to say the Wheatley brothers will be watching this afternoon's game from their homes. Started to a great roar of acclaim. And a loud blast right away as the players go down on the floor. The ball went forward to Stephen Hilditch. And there Hil Stephen Hilditch insisting on the referee on the uh, forward staying apart until the ball was available. Nas Porter right away into the action, a huge kick down to England's 22. Jonathan Webb takes a quick throw in to Tony Underwood. Underwood running out from his own 22 with a magnificent run this is, the youngster going like a train up there. Tremendous support as the ball is kicked on, but the referee's whistle has gone. But what a start for the 23-year-old Tony Underwood. Well, what a tremendous start there by uh, young Underwood there, playing in his second international. And I think uh, it shows the new line-out law to his best advantage there, where Jonathan Webb was able to take, take the quick throw in, and Underwood there, devastating and broken play. Brian Moore has worked it back, along to Andrew from Morris. That's the up and under, Will Carling is up quickly as he did not so long ago to score a try against Will Peter Winterbottom. Hands on to Clark, the number eight forward, up to the South African 22. Morris, a great chance here for England. Andrew, Carling, Carling half through, a blistering tackle there by Tian Strauss, the number six, and the South Africans have been penalised for handling after the tackle and not getting to their feet. You see it here, the quick ball, Will Carling decides to take on the South African defence. As he's tackled, he turns, makes the ball available, and you can see, I think it's sort of Tian Strauss there who's penalised. Jonathan Webb then, with 252 points from 28 internationals so far. And Webb kept his concentration well. The first score of the match, three points to nil, England lead. And he Diving, get out of the way, shouts Stephen Hilditch to Peter Winterbottom. Nas Bota, who lies third in the goal-kicking stakes uh, for average points per international. 11.1 he scored in 27 international. Here with a chance to kick three, it looks very good. And it's a superb kick. And what a repost by the South African captain. But he's given it a tremendous lick, it looks good, and it is. That's another superb kick by the South African captain. And they're in the lead by six points to three. The South African supporter delighted. So is Bota, so are his colleagues. Almost 20 minutes gone. Rob Andrew held it up well. Up again went Hatung. 
Great drive on there with Peter Winterbutter helping T gets along the line to Bayfield. Bayfield surging up, you can see how close they are now. A chance as it goes out to Andrew. Carling, Carling half through. Great surge here by the number eight, Ben Clark. Has he made the line? He's a big fellow. A real chance for Dowie Morris as Malun tries to get to him. Now he's held by Smith. And that's the clearance. Nicely out there to Tony Underwood. Tony Underwood in at the corner. An extraordinary try. And the referee was right on the spot. Congratulated by his brother. A superb try by the right wing in the left corner. It was worth seeing that one. And we see Ron Van Rensburg there. Fly hits it. But just look how Rory Underwood feeds his brother there. And once that uh, Tony's got the edge on, on Willie Hills there. And Andrew's the hooker, no doubt at all. But good finishing there by the by Tony Underwood. But there's been good work there by the English forward. But the fly hat, fly hat there. But just look at the awareness there of the Underwood brothers. That once Tony's got the outside on Willie Hills, the hooker, and his face there by Andrew. And look how he finished it off there. Good work there. Right, lovely ball. Bota. Beautifully taken by Olefir. Olefir is through the middle, over the 10 metres line. He had Malun, the big fellow, right alongside him. Right once again to Muller, to Herber. Herber out to the right wing, James Small. He's well tackled there by Guscott initially. Peter Winterbottom, you notice number seven there, trying to rip that ball clear. To a drop goal attempt and it's through. An extraordinary drop goal by the South African captain. His 210th drop goal in representative rugby. And it was a brilliant piece of vision by him. Remarkable piece of play by North Botha. He looks to do a long pass there into the open field, shrivels round, realises there's nothing on, and just look at that. What a tremendous piece of work there by Botha. World-class play. Quite astonishing that Botha there felt, having put his side ahead, he felt that there was nothing on outside him, and he shriveled and dropped the goal. Muller, Bota, go to Olefier, Olefier outside Moore, back inside to Willie Hills, Hills to Bota, Bota right along the line to Muller, Muller uh, saw Strauss outside but kicked instead and Webb may have an easy touchdown there, indeed he has, it's Brian Moore taking his time about this one and uh, wiping the ball clean, he wants to be sure he gets it dead right, but it was meant for Bayfield and he seemed to have it in his grasp, and they almost drove over, now it's right, right to Strauss, Strauss, oh they're simply delighted, the try is awarded, help there by Richter, Tian Strauss the scorer, a magnificent try by him. A great moment for Strauss, his first try in the uh, South African jersey, it was the short pass from his scrum half right that did it, he didn't have far to go, he had help from Richter, good score. Nas Bota with the conversion, England uh, congregated there, discussing what went wrong. Bota, yes, it's through his third successful kick of the match, and uh, South Africa leading by 16 points to 8, that's it, 10 minutes to go to half-time, they were on the floor and holding the ball in very interesting that in that if you handle in a ruck it's only a free kick but if in handling in a ruck you prevent the other team from winning fair ball it becomes a penalty and so here Jonathan Webb can kick straight for three points looks easy enough from behind the post doesn't it and uh, he made it look very easy indeed, it hung up in the air, the touch judges wanted to be sure to check with each other, but two penalty goals for Jonathan Webb, 16 points to 11, South Africa. Uh, well, the uh, South African scrum half intruded into the line out, he's not allowed to, it was a free kick. And look at this again, guess who? Oh, it's another beautiful kick, beautifully judged. Oh, England sticking to the two-man line-out. They're uh, making sure that Bayfield and Dooley won't be uh, interfered with in the 
middle of it there, that's Andrew once again, that's a huge kick, maybe just a bit too far, Van Rensburg called, but in fact it was Bota who went back there, gave it to Van Rensburg, he's dicing with all kinds of uh, misfortune as he's chased by Jason Leonard, and there was just a momentary indecision between the two of them there, and there Bota's explaining to him, you can see it there, Bota did well to keep his concentration, and Van Rensburg got a shock when he got the pass. So that's the uh, South African goal line. There'll be a big shove going on here as Morris waits. Morris to Andrew. That's a chip kick through net for Guscott. That's a great try. Guscott was through so quickly. And Jeremy Guscott scores his 15th try for England. He's had a drop goal as well. And that was a cracker. Beautifully created. I think this was a set-piece play by England. Just look how quickly the South African defence comes up. Rob Andrew just chicks it over the top. And great awareness there by Jeremy Guscott. Not a man inside to touch down. Well worth try that. So Jonathan Webb with a kick to put England ahead. Yes, it just sneaked in, but it's good enough. So it's 18 points to 16, and it was a lovely little chip kick by Rob Andrew. You notice the bent knee, and Guscott was through so quickly. Of course, he's much quicker than he looks sometimes. It was a good catch to superb concentration. Two points in it now. Big Ben Clark, number eight at the tail there. Six feet five of him, almost 17 stones there. Well, he used it well there, Garth White with the tackle. South African scrum half was committed there. Winterbottom standing off. Morris again to Andrew. Andrew's kick is an awkward one for Convensburg. Hills had difficulty getting the ball over Martin Bayfield there. The drive out the front of the line out. Now it's Morris. Morris going two or three metres short still. Obogu again. Now it's Morris. Great search by Clark. Clark caught a metre short. A real chance here for the for England if they could win decent ball Morris looking for the option swept outside and they'll have to wait for uh, this injury to Tony Underwood and yes cutting across and obstructing as the ball came out it was such a slow ball for England not a great deal of use to them Morris through, this is what he did last season, scoring three tries in the championship. Pick up and drive by Jason Leonard, he's caught by Strauss. Up to the South African 22, a chance here as Rob Andrews switches. Remember he made a try for Rory Underwood against France once with that quick switch. But the South Africans were offside at the breakdown point. The referee playing advantage decided it wasn't good enough and he has awarded the penalty. And this could be a very important one indeed for England. And he realised the importance of it. His third penalty goal to add to the conversion of the try. And England leading 21 points to 16. And there you are, almost 15 minutes gone. Back goes Bota, back goes Van Rensburg. And Bota is the man who saves it. Helped by his fullback. But Rory Underwood showing very quick thinking there when the ball went loose. And of course, that's such a difficult kind of ball to deal with. If you see here, that ball on the ground on a slippery ground with a slippery ball is a desperately hard one to cope with. Reminded me a bit of Borders rugby, that Bill. Bill Feet Foot Scotland, Russ. Feet Bill, yes. The great days. What a position for England. Bayfield prime and took it beautifully. Teague goes and drives. A lovely wedge by England. Can they roll it over? Teague was the first man in there. Winterbottom helping Brian Moore. Brian Moore. Scratching about there on the floor. But you can see how tight it is. This is desperate now for South Africa. Another... Dowie Morris gets the score. And that's his fifth try for England in his 11th international match. And I tell you, Garth Wright was so unlucky there. 
but Morris was so quick. We'll just have a look at it, it's that kind of snap score. Yeah, we see Rye putting the ball in, really the, the ball comes back too quickly, Adrian Richter gets his foot to it, and Rye couldn't do anything about it. Well, that really was clumsy footwork that uh, gave Dewey Morris the try and made the score that, with 12 minutes to go. And Jonathan Webb now with the chance to kick his fifth goal of the match. Webb looks good. It is. And so the big fellow adding to his tally. And England stretching away. And Dewey Morris, of course, will be specially delighted because he hasn't had his troubles to seek with the uh, intense pressure on him and also with uh, some dodgy ball floating about. Morris to Rory Underwood. Rory Underwood has gone over halfway. Lovely bit of work by him. On goes Ben Clark. Superb support by Rory Underwood once again. Now it's Dewey Morris. A switch there to the right might open things up for England. Ubogu was there as well. Just outside the South African 22. Morris once more thinking of the narrow side. Garth Wright takes the kick. Out to Herbert. Herbert feels the pressure. Lee rises. Oh, not using the correct arm. It's a free kick. You've got to use the inside arm or both hands nowadays. That's to stop fellas levering themselves up on an opponent's shoulder. It's a free kick offence. Willie Hills leads the charge. Right. This is Muller. Peter Muller. Oh, what a tackle by Peter Winterbottom. Absolute classic copybook tackle there. The interception by Nasbota, but uh, deemed to have been offside. I'd love to have seen what the veteran would have done with it, Bill, if the referee hadn't blown. That's right. Then, Morris to Andrew, once again the high one, it may have gone a bit too far, it depends on the bounce. Garth Wright is in trouble with it, and it's a try! It's a try for Will Carling. The England captain has shielded his seventh try. The crowd here are absolutely delighted. The same kind of try he scored against Wales in the Championship. The follow-up to the high kick. 33 points to 16, it was, at first I thought it had gone too far, but in fact it landed perfectly for England, just short of the line, Garth Wright was the first lad underneath it, Van Rensburg got a high one, couldn't cope with it, Will Carling could. There we see the high ball coming down again, Garth Wright caught in no man's land, but I don't know where James Small was, the South African winger, but uh, Will Carling following up extremely well to seal the match for England. England's fullback once again. He's already slotted one from virtually the same position. And he looks to have slotted one. No, it's just outside. But nonetheless, England uh, virtually home and dry now. And a handsome victory, and it looks as if it's going to be the biggest victory the South Africa have ever suffered in a test match in, uh, in the British Isles. Boat has restarted. Didn't go the 10 metres. The referee's whistle has gone for no side. And England have won in the end a handsome victory by 33 points to 16. And I think, Bill, based on line-out domination in the second half. Yes, line-out and scrimmage that uh, certainly they, they dominated the set pieces. The South Africa never looked like threatening the line. That It was good play by the type five. Darren Morris had a far more comfortable second half. Rob Andrews able to play the touch lines. And as it was, uh, with the, the South Africans winning no ball, it was always going to be difficult for them to strike out territory from 70, 80 yards. But a workmanlike performance by England. South Africa will feel extremely disappointed that the scoreline is such a big one at 33 points to 60. But it all goes well, extremely well for England, for the Five Nations, and for the South Africans. That uh, it's good to see them back on the international scene.